And we are live. Uh, welcome back to episode nine, I think, for 2023. And I'm honored to have Rob in England back with me. Rob, nice to see you again. Always a little a bit pleasure. closer than time zones at the moment. <laughs> yeah, just a bit. But just a bit, yeah. I'm so I suppose Rob, and and you're doing wonderful work in, 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 in Vietnam. Before we start talking about the top topic, just tell us a little bit about this experience that you and Sherry has got in, in, in Vietnam um, and, and how do you make a difference? Yes, it's very interesting because we make a good team. Um, I've introduced Cherry to a lot of the ideas of business agility and better ways of managing and working. And Cherry is Vietnamese and has huge credibility in Vietnam and um, is able to operate at an executive level here. She she has the prestige to do that. So, uh, and she's a really dynamic consultant and, and, and agent of change. So together, we, we have an interesting position in Vietnam, a, a bit of a blue ocean. There's really nobody else presenting these ideas effectively in native Vietnamese. So our only competitors okay. are, the, are the big C, right? The big consultants and yeah. and they make a real hash of it. So um, so we're having a really good time and, and have lots of success with, with lots of clients because these ideas really, really work. So um, yeah, we're thriving here and um, we've just had corporate rebels out to visit Vietnam. If some people will be aware of their website and their book where they um, um, uh, interview organizations around the world who are doing working in better ways. And so they've talked to four of our clients here in Vietnam now, and, and we're trying to get them back again next year to do a few more. Uh, and they're very impressed with what they saw. And we're looking forward to some blog posts and articles from them about, about what we're doing. So it's really, um, very, uh, very fulfilling. We're really making a difference in, in people's working lives and, and making it diff we, our motto is, is make work better, better results. So we're getting huge results and better lives, mm. better, mm. you know, for the people doing it and better society where we're, we're, we're dropping a few influential ideas along the way there too. So and trying to make the organizations into better corporate citizens. So, um, yeah, it's having a ball. Having a really good time. No, no, it sounds awesome, and I absolutely love it every time I see one of your posts. And there's some new yeah. smiling faces. You can see in their faces the level of enthusiasm that they've got about the. We're, we're very, the very lucky. Or, yeah. Mm. So awesome! My 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 father-in-law used to say, "Luck stands for labor under correct knowledge." Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll take that. So back to back to get it. So the theme of get it this year is to innovate and solve problems. Um, and I suppose what we're going to talk about is going to play slab bang in both of those areas. Um, I, I, I suppose most people know standard and uh, uh, standard and case as a sort of as a problem management way of thinking. Um, but I suppose innovation is just solving problems, isn't it? It's it's an innovative way of thinking about response to situations. Um, when you say most people, I think um, there's very few people who have become aware of standard this case. It's one of my great disappointments, I guess, in the last decade is that I, I suck at marketing and I haven't managed to, to generate the community around it that I would have liked to have because um, I do think it's the best idea I've ever had. And 
and um, so um, I'll, I'll just I'll backpedal a bit then and explain to to the ninety eight percent of your audience that have no idea what we're talking about <laughs> that that um, ten years ago um, Charlie Betts mentioned case management and said it's really interesting that we talk about service management a lot in our world it philosophers of work we talk about service management but we don't talk about case management and i went what's case management and went and had a look and there is this whole body of knowledge out there in the world about generically how you deal with cases legal case medical case social work case case right um and so just like we have this abstract idea of service management, whatever the service, there's this abstract idea of case management, whatever the case. And when I looked into it, the, the, my little contribution was this aha moment to go, if you combine what we think thought of in the idle world as service management with this case management, the two of them click together to be a complete description of how you would think about situational analysis, dealing with sense making, dealing with situations. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so that was a decade ago. And in the process of researching that book, I came across a thing called Kinefin. And that was my mm -hmm. first introduction to Kinefin. And, 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 so I've learned more and more and more about complexity in that past 10 years. And um, so I've, it's for years now, I've been thinking I really need to rewrite that book and fold in all the things I've learned in the intervening years. And so I've finally got around to rewriting it. So 10 years later, we've got Response Taiji, which is the second edition of Stanford's Case. And um, it's okay. mostly the original book, but updated with much more understanding, particularly about complexity and, and a bunch of other fields. And they're having a second run at trying to get some attention for the idea, because I think it's a really useful idea to, to your point, innovate how we respond to situations. So more yeah. solve problems, but more broad, broadly, how we respond to any sort of situation, whether it's a house fire or a Seb one production IT outage or a whatever as you as you yeah. confront a, a situation how do you respond? There you go. There's you, now we're up you to talked that. about can 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 Evan, So um, Dave tells me that I'm oversimplifying it and I don't understand it. <laughs> yeah, he, he says the same thing to me. But, but I, I think, think that's standard Dave I think, response. I think Dave, I think Dave <laughs> seriously needs people to interpret what he says for laymen. Right? I think that's yeah. an important social service to have around him. <clears throat> is, <laughs> yeah. So if, if we talk about standard and case, um, or your, your approach to sense making, and, and for those of the audience who know Ken Evan, would, would you say it's fair to say that um, the, the standard stuff is be, below the line and the case stuff is above the line? So the case stuff is look sort of complex and complicated? Yeah. Um, it is. It does map quite well to Kinefin, and it's just a simpler two-domain model rather than a five- or eight-domain model, depending on which flavor of Kinefin you're using. Yes. So... Um, if, if you think in terms of Kinefin, and most of your audience will be familiar with that, but for those who aren't, there's primarily um, a clear domain, which is the simple or obvious work, and then there's the complicated domain, which is using our existing knowledge, but you need experts to unpack it. And then there's a complex domain where your existing expertise isn't going to work, you have to learn and, and discover new things to, to, to cope mm. with the complexity of the world and and um, a chaotic domain where your knowledge is not a lot of use to you because things are completely outside the constraints and bounds and, and a confused domain in the middle where you're still trying to work out where you fit in those. 
so they're the basic five sort of domains of Kinef and, and and so uh, I'm further oversimplifying it to just two domains. So um, yeah. standard work is work that is defined and repeatable. Um, you remember the old CMMI stuff about the five levels of maturity yeah. that are getting yeah. to where your work is defined and repeatable. So once it's defined and repeatable, then ITIL talks about standard models or used to talk about standard models. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it still does. Um, and, and that's where the word standard came from, from the ITIL term standard models. And so some of your work, you've got a standard model for it. It's clear, it's simple. You've got a defined um, sequence of steps you execute to, it's a transaction. And that's standard work. And, and the problem that I felt all the time dealing in service management was we regarded everything else as an exception condition. We said, if you don't have it standardized, then A, what's wrong with you? You're supposed to be standardizing everything. And B, work it out, right? So, you know, like yeah. um, incident management, you were supposed to have everything standardized and keep working towards everything standardized. And when you didn't bleh, wave hands, go to level two. Um, and, and in problem management, it was mostly not standardized. There are very few standard problems. And so um, there was just this big fuzzy cloud in ITIL that said, uh, resolve the problem, right, without any real guidance. And so I realized that standard is you define repeatable work, and case is everything else. So in Kinefin yeah. terms, it's it's it's... Anything, anything that's in complicated, complex, chaotic, confused, any situation where you don't have a standard, defined, repeatable way of dealing with the situation, cases the sort of generic methodology for dealing with the whole rest of the, the space. So it's a much simpler two-domain model that kind of still maps to the same um, landscape of we're in a situation, how do we make sense of it, how do we respond? Okay, before we go on, just a, a, another question, because it's something that I say to people and most people don't like it, is that yeah, best practice is obviously only helpful in the uh, in the known domain. In this, that's you know, what do we call it? Uh, it's, it's changed names a few times. Um, yeah, bottom left. No, no. <laughs> No, uh, whatever, yeah. <clears throat> and and <laughs> there's so many times that people say to us, but you need to help us with you know, getting uh, us to, to adopt best practice. And I go, why? He says, no, no, we, we want to be innovative and best of breed. And he says, well, it may help you not to suck, but it's not going to help you to be leaders. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about case management because I think standard is pretty obvious yeah yeah it's all to, the stuff to those, we, to, we to our, to our community. in best yeah. practice yeah mm, yeah um let's talk about case management mm. yeah so th there is a whole community out there um in the in our it world there's a whole bunch of people i think some of it's centered around fujitsu um but there's a bunch of people who talk about adaptive case management and they're talking about tools to manage case really typical sort of it people going straight to the all right what's the software um and more generally when you look for case management um i remember when i was getting started at this i discovered that i could become a certified case manager i thought oh yeah perfect i'll start there and then i discovered that i had to have a nursing degree first so a lot of the thinking is very health centric right of when okay. you, know, you dig in and you discover that they're just assuming you're in the health industry when they talk about case management so the generic stuff is actually thin on the ground it's it's usually rooted in in it in health in law um, or in social work they're kind of the main groups and when they talk about any standards or certifications or documents or books they're usually not being generic across all four of those it is actually hard to find nice 
but that's true of service management as well, right? You've got um, USM Bot years ago from um, from yeah, Ian Clayton, yeah. and you got um, um, my yeah, tiny little basic service management. management. But yeah. th there's there's not a lot of there's more now, but there's not a lot of stuff that is generic outside IT service management. Um, and there was some really good stuff in the 90s, academic stuff, principles of service management. Anyway, it's the same thing, though. People tend to be stuck in one particular sector. Um, so, I, But anyway, case management is about um, when you don't know the answer, and so therefore you have to iterate and increment your way exploring forward step by step. Does this sound familiar? It sounds exactly like agile ways of working, right? Yes, You're dealing with a situation where you set yourself a goal and you head towards it, but on each iteration you reconsider the goal because it may have moved with the information that you learn in each iteration. And so um, a, a, a concrete, ex to give a more practical example, imagine that um, two cops get a call to say there's a dead body in an apartment and they so they head for the apartment and they're ringing the... Um, uh, the morgue to say, come and pick up a body, someone's died. Um, they get to the apartment and they're ready to fill out the paperwork. And then they realise that not only are they dead, but they've been killed and there's been violence. And so suddenly it's, no, don't come and pick up the body. Call the detectives. We need site control. We need, you know, we've got to get the tapes up. We're now So suddenly the procedures are different. The goal's different all based on that one piece of information when they first arrive at the location. So with each step, new information change, can change the whole picture. Yes. No plan survives the first encounter with reality and all that. And yeah. so that's case management. It's this model for how you, you just proceed. Uh, you decide what your next step is. You look, you look at all your information. You sense make where you are now. You decide what your next step is. You decide what action you have to execute to take that step. You execute that action. You get to your new situation. You see what new information you can gather. You aggregate that information. You reconsider your situation and, and on you go. So it also sounds remarkably like the Toyota Improvement Carter, the one, two, three, four yeah. Improvement Carter. Yeah. Um, or PDCA cycle. I mean, all of these things, case management, they're all different language for the same reality. This idea that you have to iterate and explore your way forward in incremental steps. Um, and Jacqueline, you just mentioned something interesting, and that was one of the two things that I quickly wanted to to ask Rob. Is so would would it be then fair to say in case man management you would have some form of heuristics um, rather than a fixed method? Um, to guide you on this journey. Um, totally. Because totally. She, she mentioned uh, triage, for instance, in, in the comment here. Mm. Um, so you have lots of procedures that you can pull out of your tool belt at any point, right? Yeah. Like the cops know exactly how to secure a murder site. That's a yes. standard procedure they follow every time. Um, mm. uh, so you have all these procedures that are standardised, that are little um, Lego blocks. But at the start of the journey of the case, you have no idea what sequence of steps you will be taking or what, pro okay. what processes you'll use at each step. You will um, create that journey dynamically as you go forward. So, you know, one of the big differences between standard and case is in standard, the steps are predefined. The sequence is predefined. Uh, whereas mm -hmm. in case, it's, it's emergent. It, it, it comes out during the execution of the case, um, which means that uh, statistical information is of very little value in case management. It's another interesting angle because every case is a different sequence of steps to a different goal with different... So, you know, we have, if you can't have SLAs that say we promise to resolve all all cases within 24 hours it's like you know what how long would it take to solve a murder right you know <coughs> yeah. um so your statistical information becomes much less interested and your narrative 
review information becomes much more interesting. So considering each case as a learning story and unpacking it is much more interesting than aggregate statistical data in the case. But that implies that intuition also plays a role. Intuition? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Your no, knowing what to do, go next, where to go next. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Expertise. That knowing is not a real knowing. It's a. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, so that also opened another interesting area, which is um, that we tend to separate people by skills into people who like so you consider a service desk which again most of the people listening that's something they're familiar with um when you're the newbie on the service desk you dread getting an incident that's a really complicated gnarly one because you've got no idea you're in at the deep end but if we separate out to say when you're new on the service desk we'll channel all the standard work to you so you know that if you click on the knowledge base there will be a script for how to execute this and we'll channel all the case to the certified case workers who are the senior people on the service desk who have certified and all the various skills to be able to deal with a case. And, and so the newbies feel a lot safer because they know they can just pass a case to a case worker. And the people who have been on the service desk for a long time know they're not going to be resetting passwords, that they get the really interesting, crunchy incidents to deal with. So their life is much more interesting and and. And so it, it can increase the satisfaction of people by separating out standard and casework according to people's level of expertise. And um, once again, two two quick things that I'm I'm a bit squirrel, as you know. Um, why 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 did you choose the name Tai Chi? Because Tai Chi uh, as a form is sequenced, or or did you mean the Tai Chi, which most people say the yin yang symbol yeah absolutely i i meant the whoops this is a pre-print edition with a big stripe across it that won't isn't on the final one but yeah um, yeah i meant the yin and yang the tai g uh, one of the okay. meanings of tai g yeah, is the, that the, symbol yeah yeah and I've most people don't know that the, the name for the symbol is actually a, a the tai chi Oh, they will after they read the book. So, incidentally, at five o'clock this afternoon, I'm going to. Picking my. Uh, sorry, my hand movements didn't come across. That was supposed to be push and grab the sparrow's mm. tail. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, okay, so that was the one. That, what was the other one that I was thinking about? So um, Jacqueline asked here about um, KCS. I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's a sound yeah, I've yeah. heard before. Um, mm -hmm. How does it compare? So KCS, Knowledge Centered Support, or it's now called Knowledge Centered Service, something slightly different. Yeah. Anyway, KCS, knowledge, putting knowledge at the center of response. Um, is absolutely, again, fits in beautifully with case management because um, uh, standard work is process-centric. It's driven by process and it generates data, whereas case work <clears throat> is driven by knowledge and it generates process. We need to do this thing at this step. So it's the other way around, right? Standard is process in, knowledge out. Casework is knowledge in, process out, decide what to do next. So um, you need really good knowledge management in case management um, so that you've got the best possible picture at each step to understand your situation. Cops are really into knowledge management these days to have put together many, many, many small items of information all, you know, these thousands of tips being phoned in and, you know, cops are really good at aggregating and visualizing that sort of information these days. So you want this really good knowledge management to help you make the right decisions at each step. And also you want really good knowledge management because you want to keep good records of what happened in each case 
because, as I said, the value of cases doesn't come from statistics. It comes from reflecting on the story. So when we review a case, we want to have good records of why did we decide that at that point? What, you know, what was... So the knowledge management is important to help us as we go through and also help us to learn afterwards. And so, yes, KCS becomes even more important in, in case management in, in terms of helping us to to um, put knowledge at the center of what we're doing. And also because KCS emphasizes this idea of capture, capturing and standardizing knowledge, right? KCS is driving standard models to the responders. It, it, okay. it, it's, it's creating constantly curated, uh, improved uh, knowledge and, and that's actually the guts of Stanopus case. That's the the real power. Like Stanopus case, you think, oh, this is good. You have two different ways of dealing together. But the real bazinga, the real kicker is when you realize that as you're reviewing your cases, you'll start to recognize recurrent patterns and you'll start documenting those patterns and you'll be able to turn those into standard models. So, for example, um, uh, you know, you've got your service desk humming along, everything's going great, and then suddenly all these people start ringing in saying, I'd like to connect my iPhone se version 75 or whatever we're up to with iPhones now, right? Um, I've got this new version of the iPhone, and it won't connect to the network. So suddenly all the standard ways of connecting an iPhone don't work anymore. And our case managers have got to dig in and work out why the hell this new version of iPhones is not connecting anymore. Mm -hmm. And so that's a case. But once they resolve a couple of those cases, they'll realize that there is a new pattern for how you connect this new form of iPhone. They'll standardize that. They'll shove it into the rack of standard models with all the others into yeah. the knowledge base. And now the simple standard workers can, in future, deal with that new scenario. So there's this constant flow from casework into standardized work. We're constantly generating new standard work in response to a changing world. Um, yeah. and, and KCS sort of has that same mentality. But Stanford's case, that is the heart of it, is that not only does it give us these two models for dealing with the world, but one is pouring, is, is helping. It actually with, feeds the other one. Yeah, totally. Work. Yeah, it helps the standard work constantly um, adapt to a changing world. But then we also need to know when standard is no longer valid because quite often yep. that, that, you know, that, that's the cause of chaos if we go back to Kinevin. It's because we assume that we, because we've done something the same way for 17,000 years, it's still going to work tomorrow and it's becoming less and less true you know, in the fast-paced world of today. Um, that's so, a really that's, that's a really interesting point. I'm, I'm as you say that I'm realizing I'm not sure I deal with that fully in the book. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but do it's one what? of the things. I mean, I do a lot of training around solving problems, and normally in an IT context, that starts with a major incident. Yeah, mm. and then I get yeah, to I say mean, to the people that why do you have so many major incidents? Mm, so people don't mm. follow the processes, but it's a shit process. It doesn't apply anymore. It doesn't work. People can't use it. Yeah. Yeah. Your standard is no longer valid. Yep. There, Sorry for there my needs to be, out. I, I might have to. <laughs> I might have to do. I might have to do version two point one. That's your fault. <laughs> That's good. I, I, I love it. I thought I was done with that book, but but I, yeah, I don't think I discussed that enough in the book. Thinking about it, I'm going to have to go back and check. So what's What's interesting is there's a there's a book, but I only think I think it's only available as an audio book. Um, uh, Beyond the goal, where uh, Eli Goldratt talks a lot about this thing. One, once you've actually put measures in place to, um, um, to 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 subordinate or to view the system, um, that people forget to take that out and the terrible consequences of that. Mm. Um, that's mm. like putting workarounds in place that becomes a permanent fix even after yeah, yeah. The, the problem doesn't exist anymore. Because yeah, it stops yeah. us from doing other good stuff. Yeah. Mm. Um, okay. So 
Would you agree with this statement that as the world progresses, it becomes more and more important for us to create meaningful work by freeing people of doing standard work because machines can do it better? Yeah, totally. And I mean, that's the history of humanity is that we've uh, automated toil through history and, and it goes on, it continues. So, yeah, there is a discussion in the book about how standard in turn feeds into automation, that, that you can only okay. automate at the moment, unless AI changes this in the future, at the moment, you can only automate that which is defined and repeatable. Yeah, so it is a standard, yeah. Yeah, you, you okay. can't automate so something. what skills, because we already a little bit over time, but stuff it, let's continue. What skills would then be necessary to develop in people that's doing predominantly standard work so that they can play a meaningful role in organizations in future? And can you? So, the, yeah, it's a really interesting question. So people progress from standard to case, right? As they learn, they build their skill set to a point where they start dealing with cases. So that is a career path for people who want to stay on the service desk, who want to stay in response as they become more and more senior and pick up the harder and harder um, cases. Um, that's one progression. But the, actually, the really gnarly problem that people are talking about a lot in sorts of fields of knowledge management is that as you automate away the standard work, what do you give the kids to do? What do you give the newbies, the beginner, people joining the organization, the, the people straight out of school, whatever? Um, what do you give those people to work on if you have automated away the standard work? You know, the more and more, the only work you've got left is the hard work. Yeah. And they don't get to cut their teeth on simple work. So that is an issue. That, that's genuinely an issue. Um, I'm not sure how... Okay, I've, we've lost it up there. Let's see if we can reconnect. Okay, while I'm while I'm waiting for 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 to see if we can get Rob back, um, maybe let me quickly do this. Um, if you, okay, you back. Where was I up to? Hello, Rob. Can you hear me? Yeah, now I can. Let's go back to this view. Okay, so so the, the, the last week we talked about is what do you give the, 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 the people in the beginning of this cycle of, of work to do? Because yeah. doing standard stuff means learning. Yeah, so it's, it's a real challenge, right, is what do you give people to cut their teeth on when they're first beginning? Um, and I... Uh, uh, I do hope, and I have no data for this, that there'll always be enough for new people to work on simply because we're always trying to play catch up with automation. The world's moving forward all the time. There's new standard stuff emerge. We're, put, we're channeling new stuff into standard all the time. And you kind of hope there's always that zone between what we've automated and what we've discovered as standard. There's always some standard work that hasn't been automated yet you hope that you can give the new kids to work but on. I, I think that is true. Yeah, I, I, I think that if I just look at my <laughs> what's nearly 40 year career now, yeah, I started as a, as a mainframe techie who, who, who replaced components on boards. Yeah, that's how mm -hmm. we fixed the, the mainframe. You, yeah. you ripped the board out, you replaced it with another board, you went back and then you sat with a logic analyzer and you replaced discrete logic. And I can remember, you know, sort of here in the, the 90s, I was getting really annoyed with 
the, the technicians that worked for me, that they didn't have this fundamental underlying knowledge of how a computer actually works. <laughs> but after the while, yep. I realized it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, no, it all it, it, and, it all sinks down into the mud, right? Layer by layer. Yeah. It becomes invisible. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So I think yeah. you're right. There will always be standard work that that <laughs> that people need to learn. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I also think that you, you need to create environments in which, uh, or richer environments, we, where inexperienced people can learn more uh, from experienced people by becoming involved in case work. Uh, yeah, totally. So I, I do touch on that in the book for sure that... Um, the necessity of not leaving them to work in isolation and having um, uh, a, a master apprentice relationships or practitioner yes. apprentice relationships and mentoring relationships and paired yeah. working and swarming too, intelligent yeah. swarming. Um, yeah. So that swarming's great because they're in the room with a whole bunch of experts all throwing ideas around and yeah. and they're immersed in with that. Um, so that's that's another really good mechanism for making sure you transfer that knowledge as quickly as possible. Okay. We're running the risk now of going back to an hour session. So I think we need another session. <laughs> <laughs> People told me that, you know, we I, I can't listen to a session on the treadmill that's an hour long. <laughs> oh, well, um, they'll, they'll, just have, they'll just have to read the book, man. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, Rob, once again, it was a pleasure yeah. having you on the, the podcast. Um, always learn a lot. Um, and if if you would like to contact Rob, um, all that I've done is I've copied the stuff off LinkedIn, and there yeah. is the link to the new book. Um, mm -hmm. And... Uh, yeah, and, and LinkedIn, LinkedIn's a good place to find me too. Yeah. Yeah. So all the connections are there. Um, all that leaves that leaves me then to to say is thanks for joining. Hope you'll oh, join us you. soon again. Uh, mm -hmm. Rob, just stick on for the washout. Um, for those of you. Listening, here's a little gift for you. If you go to Smashwords um, and you use that code, you can get a free copy of Competing in the Digital Future. Um, and I hope all of you are looking out uh, to become an app certified. So thank you for everything. See you next time. Bye.